Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with the October 2023 colour combo. Now this month, um, the colours don't exactly play to my palette, but as with everything, I'm going to have a go and I've got an idea of doing something. I'll explain. Let me just show you the colours anyway. So with any of the colour combinations, you can add black. So I'm adding Mars black. You can add white. I'm adding white. Um, you can add a metallic. I've got this metallic paint. It's vintage brass. I'm going to use this, which I don't use very often because it's a bit thin, but I've had it stored upside down. So I'm hoping that will improve it. But the colours are burgundy and orange. So I've been through everything I've got to see if I've got anything in burgundy orange. Well, I've got an orange crayon, um, carved pumpkin by Tim Holtz at Ranger. I've got Pebio or PBO um, DYNA. This is a like, it's like a metallic, but it's more of a sheen, more of a pearl. So that's, um, what one is that? That's iridescent orange yellow. Um, I've got Shuttle Art Acrylic Paint Orange, and this will give me almost a sheen. It's it's a transparent, I believe. I've not used it before, so except to swatch it. Um, and this is just Deco Art Bright Orange. So those are the oranges. Now, the burgundy I had a problem with, because the only burgundy I've got is this one. So I thought, right, we're going to use this as a guide, because this is the Shuttle Art one. So if this is burgundy, I went through everything else, and I've got... This one, which is red wine, which is not far off that. I pulled out this golden, which says quinacridone burnt orange. And I saw that and I thought it will sit in there because it's got the word orange in it. I'm OK with it. And I pulled out this magenta because the magenta sort of sits in there as well. Now, with the color combo, we always say use what you've got. Don't go out and buy more paint just to do the combo. So um. I did a little bit of research to see if I could find out what the ingredients were for making burgundy. And as far as the internet says, it's a two to one ratio of red and another color. And I say and another color because there are other colors. So you can have two parts red and one part blue. I thought that would make purple, but apparently it makes burgundy. You can have two parts red and one part green. Mm. Not sure about that. Or two parts red and one part brown. So as you can see, there's there's lots of different variations on the internet of what you can use. So I would say find something close to it in your stash and adjust it. Um, if you've got something that's maybe a deep red, maybe you could add a touch of black to knock it down a bit and play around. But at worst case scenario, if you don't have burgundy, Use the closest thing you have. We're not going to make people spend any more. Well, we're not going to encourage people to spend any more money. So, as you know, I'm... Um, how do I put this? I, I'm trying not to call myself a perfectionist. I strive for perfection and I accept excellence. That's the way I'm handling my perfectionism. And I think I'm breaking away from it, but I am quite controlling and methodic. So I thought this time I want to do something very much freeing. I want to see how how risky I can get. And I've seen a few people doing abstract stuff on big sheets of paper on the internet and cutting it down into square panels and then framing them. And I went, you know, I'm going to have a go at something like that. So it is only something like that. So I've got a 12 by 12 in white and I've got a 12 by 12 in black because I thought it would be an interesting experiment to see how the different colors work on the different backgrounds. Now I've taped it down with a bit of low tack masking tape just to hold it in place so it doesn't move around because there's going to be brushing, crayoning, watering, all different things on it. So I bought these two out and these are just acrylic plates that I normally put my gel plates on and these are just non-stick buttons I put on the back so they don't slip around. So we're going to be doing two of these and then once they're done and dry I'm going to cut them into pieces and I'm going to back them onto these craft card pieces. Now, these are the size of my postcards and I'll go through measurements later on, but these are also the same size I can use for a card front. So it could be, if I really like them, they could become a card or they could become a postcard. If I don't like them, maybe they'll just become part of collage fodder for the future. So I don't really know. Now, I pulled out 
a whole load of mark making stuff um, from my drawer. I've got some of these, I believe these are Dina Wakely. I've never used them as you can see. They're like, I don't even know whether you can see them. There you go. They're like plastic scrapers for a gel plate. Um, I think they'll work on here. I have pulled out my little 5x7 because I want to use this as a stamp pad for acrylic paints because I was also gifted, thank you very much PM Artist Studio, by one of their new um, sets of foam stamps and this is called Twisted and Twirled or Twirled and Twisted, I don't know which one it is and I'm going to put a link to those in the description box below and I thought it'd be quite nice if I use these to add some drama to the backgrounds as well. So bear with me, not 100% certain how this is going to go, as normal, always on the outside of my box of thinking. Um, I've got myself a damp cloth, it's not dirty, it's just stained from almost a year's worth of work. Um, what else have I got? I've got some water to push stuff around with. I always put water in a lidded container because I can be a complete nutter klutz and if I'm a complete nutter klutz you can guess what happens. Yeah, you got it. I'm going to spill it. So I'm going to I'm going to alternate between working on the two of them. So bear with me if I keep flipping things back and forth. I don't know some things are going to work on the black, some things are going to work on the white, and the other way around. So um, right. So I'm just going to be free with this. All right, I'm just going to pull in one of the, the, my little five by seven. Now I also have over here a pile of magazines that I can wipe stuff on or just pick stuff off the plate with. Because I'm not sure how this is going to go. Right. I think. Um, let's start with the black one. Because I think what I want to do is it's obvious I don't want to put black on the black one. I don't want to put white on the white one straight away. So I'm going to come straight in with the white one. Uh, with the black one. And I'm going to put some white marks onto it. Um, let's see. Right. I've got a big old brush here. Where's my spritzer gone? Right. And I've got some water here. Let's just spray some water onto that white acrylic paint. To see, I wonder whether I've got a palette knife. You can see I haven't really thought this through because I didn't want to. I didn't want to prep too much because I wasn't sure which direction I was going to go in. So I'm using a plastic palette knife just to get some of that water into this acrylic paint. Actually, I might just forego that at the moment and just stay with a palette knife for the moment. So literally, just trying to put some marks on here. And I don't know what we're going to end up with, guys. I really don't. I don't mind going off the edges because obviously we're going to be cutting this. I want a little bit more white on here than normal for the simple reason that I want something so the colours that are dark on here will have something as a bit of a background. Right, that's that one done. Um, let's swap it with this one. Now I did say I wasn't going to put white on here, but I'm having second thoughts because I thought if I've got white on here, then that will actually blend in any of the other colours I choose to put on here. Now the aim of the colour combo is that whatever you create, the main players on your finished piece should be the two, or sometimes there's three. I think in 2024 I'm going to start introducing three colours instead of two because a few of you actually said you'd like it to be three colours instead of two and I get that I do get that sometimes two can be a lim bit limiting so um so the featured colours need to be the ones named so this is burgundy and orange so the ones I'm expecting to see at the forefront would be burgundy orange right so I've got that down um I'm thinking I'm thinking <laughs> I'm definitely thinking um, I'm thinking I'm going to take this crayon. Now this is water activated, so I'm, I'm sure it's going to move around as we go. I feel like a kid in school. You know when they say go for it? I suppose that's a good thing really. Um, dragging it through everything. Oh, that's Sorry Mr. Holtz, I seem to have destroyed your crayon. Well, there you go. Well, I think that's more than enough of that. 
Right, I think I want to come in, but so you can be black and white a lot of flashing here because I, I want to jump between things. So I'm going to open up this water. I'm going to put it slightly out of my arm shot. Have I got a big enough brush? I wonder if, no, I don't want to use that brush, it's too big. Let's use this. This is one I use for watercolour. It's a number 16, whatever that means. I'm just going to come in and activate some of that water, uh, some of that orange. I don't mind if it's all activated. I, I'm literally, as I've said, I'm trying to free up the way I work. Okay, so, I don't know. Y yeah, <laughs> this feels so alien to me. So alien, right, that one can go to one side. Already I'm liking the black version better. But I think that's because it's got more drama to it. So let's let's get the white moving. Now, um, the 12 by 12 is, I believe it's 250 GSM cardstock. Um, it's what I use for my gel printing normally. So, so I do know that it, it will withstand a certain amount of moisture. But I don't want to make it so sopping wet that I can't use it. Right, let's dry the brush off slightly. Let's put the lid back on this before Kerry drops it. Because goodness knows I've been known to. Right, I think at this point I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in the burgundy. Now, another thing I'm trying to do is, as you've seen in previous things, when I actually gel plate a print, I normally cover the entire background. I'm going to try and embrace the fact that maybe not the whole background needs to be covered. Black has a place within this design, so maybe I'm okay with that. This does feel alien. Has anyone else tried this? So, I mean, I'm already loving the black one. Let, let's put it that way. I need to start thinking of putting something that's not just smears in this soon. Right, I think if I take the palette knife out of my way, I may stop using it. Right, let's get my brayer on the go, because I just want to brayer that out a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up some of the... Um, it's a sticky mat, and I'm just going to come in and put some of that into this. Not sure how much is going to pick up. But I would like some of it on here. And I'll see if I can get some onto the other one as well. Oh, I'm knocking paint over all over the place. Um, funnily enough, I'm not feeling stressed about this. If anything, this feels amusing to just... Be a 10 year old Kerry again, maybe? I mean, I, I don't know when I last played like this. So uh, I've got some bubbling here. I don't really want that much liquid on there that it's bubbling. So let's dab that off a bit. Right. So that obviously needs to come off my plate or I won't have a plate to bring it off on. I'm just using a magazine to pick up with for no other reason than I've got a whole stack of magazine around me because I harvested a magazine or two last week for my um, for my collage and for my um, glue books. So that I'm just picking stuff up basically. Right now this this shuttle art stuff has a sheen to it, which is what I'm expecting. So I right, put some to the other side. I'm already feeling that I'm going to have to be careful because it's it's not looking impactful to me, if that's a word to use. But I've got the burgundy, I've got the orange, I've got the white. I can now know that the colours are on there. I can use them in the final pieces, should I wish. I'm wondering whether I want to come in with a bit of the metallic. And I think I do. And I'm going to use this deco art. It says Extreme Sheen. Um, I remember the first time I used this, I was a touch disappointed with it. 
Um, and I don't know whether I'm a touch disappointed with it still. Right, those who saw my last trip to America, um, you saw the haul I did in America. This is this trivet that I picked up, and I like this pattern. I'm going to use it for the first time. Yay! Right, bray this out. I'll bray it quite thin because it looks quite sloppy. Okay, that's that's actually quite good. It's it's not an intense metallic, but it is there. I'm sure you can see that. You see, it's yes, that's okay. I'm liking that. I think what's putting me off is all of the mess around the edge of the board. Um, and that's just the nature of the process, I'm assuming. I mean, I have seen a few other YouTubers doing this, but they were working with enormous pieces of paper, like, well, the size of my desk, basically. Um, which I can't say. Well, I could do that. I mean, I, I probably have to work on my floor. But what it, the trouble is, it would mean that I couldn't video it. And most of the stuff I do is for video. Let's put that little bit in there, just clean that off there. Right. Happy with that. I like, I like this texture mat. I'm glad I picked that one up. Well, I call it a texture mat. I'm glad with the texture it's producing. Let's put it that way. Right. And this antique brass. Was it called antique brass? Vintage brass. I want to say that came as a part of a set with two other colours. I don't know whether there's a gold and a silver or a gold and a pewter in it. It's been a long time since I bought that. So, um, and I know I haven't used it because the very first time I used it, I used it on the gel plate. And when I brayed it out, it just, it was as if it wasn't even there. I, I wasn't at all wasn't at all happy with it so hence it didn't get used right so I've got stuff there let's give this a little bit of a wipe I don't want the metallic transferring onto everything else and again if I got it all off there near enough right so this one feels like it needs more orange this one hmm It just looks messy, but I'm okay with that. I think what it needs is it needs some more, de not needs some more, it needs a definite orange. And I think we're going to come in with my favorite, which is bubble wrap. And anything that's on here that comes off, I'm okay with that. So I'm going to use um, the acrylic art by Deco Art um, because it's a bit thicker consistency than the shuttle art. Um, and I don't really want this just yet because that's that's got a shine or a sheen to it. So I'm going to put some of this on. I mean, this in itself isn't that pungent of a colour. So, but yeah, I think that's what I'm looking for. I think when I actually put the black on here, all of a sudden it's going to jump out at me. Now. You know I normally put threes of things on onto stuff. I kind of am this time, but I'm also remembering that this is going to be cut up probably six six backgrounds out of this and six backgrounds out of this. So um basically I'm I'm putting enough so that I'm hoping there'll be a bit of the design in each each sector. Some down there, maybe a little bit over there. Right, I'm going to hide the bubble wrap from myself so I don't pull it out again, because you know what I'm like for bubble wrap. So, right, let's pick up some of this off here. A bit of a clean up. I'm tempted to try and do a bit of a image transfer of some of the text and put that on here, but I'm not sure. Um, no, because I don't know what orientation I'm going to use things in eventually. So maybe, maybe we'll forego that. We've, we've done image transfers before. We know we can do them. 
Right, you clean the plate off a bit. Right. Now, I think, looking at this, it is looking a bit of a mess. And this one is definitely lacking or something. I think I want to put some structure into it. And by structure, I mean, I want something a little more regimented. I did pull out this. I thought I could pop that in and tap that down, but I've just had an idea. I got these, as I said, I think they're Dina Wakeley's. I'm not sure. They're from Ranger, whoever they are. And then they're meant to be used on the texture mat. And I've had them for a long time. Um, but as you can see, they've not really been... I think I might have used this one looking at this one. Um, and I think I might want to put some sort of stripes into here. Or curving shapes. Let's do the less risky one. Let's do that one because... The, the spaces are bigger on that one. And I think I want to come in with a bit of the white. And I'm not going to water it down, but I am going to brayer it out a little bit. And see if I can pick up some of it on here. Okay, that wasn't what I expected, but... I'm okay with that, right? That's that's interesting. I've got this horrible feeling you're all sat there going, what the heck is that boy doing? That boy's playing, that's what that boy's doing. And I think that's enough of that. I'm feeling this is too blocky, like there's, there's too much of it. And I think, maybe if I just pick some up on a paintbrush and just move stuff around. Because I know that eventually I'm probably going to put in um, the two featured colors again. Now this one, I wonder, let's put that to one side. I wonder if I pick this whole plate up. Actually, let's give this a bit of a brayer. I wonder if I pick this whole plate up, whether I... I always say I like layers. There's a heck of a lot of layers on this one. Okay, not hating it. Um... Am I loving it is the question, and probably the answer is no. But okay, mustn't judge. That's one thing I really have learnt over the years of doing art, um, is to trust the process. So I'm just cleaning a brush out. Is to trust the process. Don't judge anything until you get to the finishing line. Um, for very obvious reasons. Um, I'm a great believer that things have to go through ugly before they get to beautiful. Not that I ever want to call anything I ever create to be called ugly, but it can be a little bit unfortunate at times. Right, so I've got stuff going on there. It's, it's a lot. I think what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to come in and maybe with the black one I'm going to add some black. And with the white one I'm going to add some white just to make sure things are pushed further into the background. I just need to work out how I wish to do that. So let's go back to the white one. Now, let's pull that off there so it didn't get stuck. So let's have a look at what we've got that's more of a thinner consistency. So I've got the quinacridone burnt orange. Now, if I remember correctly, this is quite a punch of colour when it goes on, and it's very thin, and it is transparent. Oh, there's a big glob of it stuck around the lid there. Come on, off you come. There you go. Let's get that off my fingers before I put fingerprints all over everything. Although you never know, we may resort to fin finger painting in the end. Right. Before I brayer that out, 
how do I want to apply it? Thoughtful moment. I've got some of my plastic wrap. You've seen me use plastic wrap before. I use it when I um, do my tissue technique, um, napkin technique onto, onto cards. So let's braid this out. Well, it's a rich color. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna put my plastic down and I'm gonna put, put it on there. Okay, that's, that's interesting. It's adding a little bit more geometry to it. I am covering up some of the stuff from before. I know that. I am okay with that. All right, I'm liking that. That was a good move. Okay, let's move over to the black one. I like that. That gave that a punch of something I wasn't planning, so. My shot. Almost right. If I put this over the white areas I just created, there you go. So that's adding another layer. Yeah, we're going to have to have a major cleanup after this video, I can tell you. Look at the state of me already. So, but I got what I wanted. I added, added another something in there. Right. Clean that up. So let's have a second to have a little look at this and see whether it's telling me what it wants. I think this needs black. Um, I'm almost certain it needs black. Although I wouldn't object to putting a bit more of that metallic on there either. But I don't know that I want it in a pattern. Oh, that was interesting. Look, I got a watch out of it. I wonder if I'm to stick that on something. No, I'm not going to stick it on anything. It just happened. So, image transfer happens just when you don't know that you're looking for it. But if you try to do it, goodness knows you'd never get it. Right. Um, I think I want to put a bit more of the metallic on here. I'm really liking this area and I don't mind this area. This to me is just, it's too much. It's absolutely too much. And I think that's going to be one of the things that we have to decide on when I cut it up. I think there'll be some form of a judgment call from me as to whether I like it based on the contents of that area. So I'm just going to come in and fire the brayer up there fire it across there and maybe a little bit across the edge there that is really getting a bit much it's funny because I really liked the black one and now I'm beginning to really like the white one right Oh, I could have so done an image transfer with this. I'm not really sure I want to put image transfer on here purely because um, of the directionality of it. Because if I have a figure and I don't cut that figure in the right configuration, I could easily cut someone's head off and then have half a body and you know where I'm going. Right. I think this one is pretty much ready for the stamping. Although I'd quite like to put some structural lines into it. Hmm. Now I did have, as I said, this piece and I'm wondering whether actually those might be quite dramatic. Let's just do it. Um, let's go with what's this this is wine red so this will be a warmer color than the burgundy that's on there but i would suggest it's of the same family this is nearly out so let's see how we do with that i, qu I quite like straight lines that's that's why i'm hesitating because i tend to do lines a lot I'd 
is if I do one okay I think that will be all right for that yes I think we're going to leave that at that because I think then it's probably going to be a black scenario with that this I can put some of them on there but I'm almost certain I'm going to end up covering them up It's an interesting exercise, I must admit. It's like I'm trying to fool myself that I don't care, but actually I do care. It was like when I tried doing that random glue book and I wasn't able to do the random glue book because my brain doesn't do random. And this feels very similar to that in that I will admit I'm struggling with this. I, it, it just To me, it just looks like one unholy mess. And some of you were probably looking at me going, Kerry, you're right, it is one unholy mess. But you know what? I'm, it is what it is, people. It is what it is. And just out of interest, let's see if I can do an image transfer of this one. I think it's probably too much paint on there. Yeah, there is. So, right, I think this one needs white. I think it needs white to base... Um, the other stuff upon that I'm going to put on it. So the question is, how do I want to add the white? Um, I'd quite like there to be almost blocks of white. Um, do I actually want to get something that will give me a block of white? That's a thought. I think I've got Got this big old stamp here. Who's it by? Doecraft. They're called Whispers. It gives you basically a square. And I think I might play with that. I might put white because this definitely needs white. Whatever I say, this one needs some white. Um, so let's get some white on here before I go on to the black. Um, doesn't need a huge amount of white though. I must be careful that I don't obliterate everything I've built up here. Right. Put that out, pick this up. Now these rubber stamps I only use for um, acrylic paint. So I do look after them, but I don't, I don't overly care if they get a bit saturated with paint. Now it's not printing into the middle and that's because it's on a flexible surface. And I'm okay with that. I, d I don't mind that at all. Yes, I think that one will do. I think I'll do the same on the white one because there are some really blocky colours like here. To me, it needs a little something in there. I like that to be blocked out a bit. That and down here definitely needs a little something. I don't want to put it in line with that one. Right, okay, give that a quick wipe. Okay, I think I now need to revisit what the brief is before I do the black stamping, because the black stamping is going to be um, what I would perceive as the last, the last bit. Do you know what I mean? The last piece of the puzzle. I'm looking at this. I, I don't mind this one. This one keeps bothering me. I think once I take the tape off from around the side, I might appreciate this more. But this just... I don't know why I feel I've... Oh, I don't want to obliterate that bit because I really like that. Right, let's wipe this because if my next colour might be black, I don't want it turning grey just because I've been too lazy to clean my brayer. Now, I would be quite happy to drizzle black onto this and to or to drizzle white. However, because that will probably take overnight to fully dry before I can cut stuff, 
I don't feel I want to do that so and I know I've got black stamping to go well this one definitely needs orange to be more prominent and I need some bergen to be more prominent on this because it's turning into a brass and white piece which is not my intent over there Sorry, I'm, I'm just cleaning up because I'm, I'm thinking. Yes, I do think occasionally, people. So I'm just trying to get my brain around where I want to take this next. Now, as I said, I want to make sure I've got the colours that are supposed to be in this. That definitely needs orange. I think it needs burgundy as well, but it definitely needs orange. Right, I've got some giant bubble wrap. And I think I want to put just a bit of burgundy into this. Um, I haven't used that, so let's not use it now. Let's not introduce it late. Right, I can't use the quinacridone orange because it's just the wrong fluidity for where I'm at at the moment. I don't want to use the shuttle art because that's the shiny. Um, so basically that leaves me with red wine again. So I could add white to the red wine and make it more pinky, but then I'm trying to represent the colours that are the colour combo. So right. I have to be a little bit careful where this gets put. Right. Down here needs a bit. I think just by there could do with a little tiny touch of it. I need to just a little more than that, right. Because um, I've got orange to go on here, right. So I'm just trying to talk myself in and out of the process. This one has areas that could benefit from a little bit of the same treatment, like here is incredibly vacuous. Do you like that word? I like the word vacuous. Not a word that comes up in normal conversation, I must admit. My dear, yeah, <laughs> I could think of one or two scenarios, however. Right, I think that's enough of the burgundy. It's represented on things. Okay, what have I put on that I've lost? That's the question. See, I really like the brass from the texture mat. And it wasn't a really strong colour. And I'm wondering whether to try and reintroduce that one more time. And I think the time to do it would be now instead of um, waiting until I get other colours on the go. Because I've got burgundy back in, I now need to get orange back in, and I want to do the final printing of the stamped pieces. I want those done in black, purely because I want, I want the drama they're going to offer me. So, do I come back in with that again? I think I'm going to. I think we're going to add this on again, because even though it's in the background, I really liked it, and I'd, I'd wished I'd have kept more of it visible, let's put it that way. You in shot? You are in shot. There's probably art teachers spinning in their graves out there, wondering what the hell I'm doing here. But you know what? I'm having a good time. I'm playing. And that, to me, is a road to, a road to discovery. Okay, it's subtle, but it's in there. Now I've already got it up there. I wouldn't mind a patch down there. And maybe just a bit up by there. Right, so we've successfully put on burgundy. We put on the metallic, white is already present, black is already present. 
it's just the orange I'm missing now and the, the final textural element. Now the question is, how do I want to add the orange? Um, I'm wondering whether it needs to be um, almost a block of colour again, or maybe a swipe of colour. Um, I don't think I want to put any more orange on there. There's more than enough orange on that. It's this one that's that's lacking in the criteria, should we say. Now, I don't really want to put blocks in, so I have that, but I don't think I want to do that again. Ooh. Just seen in my drawer. We could do circles. I like a circle. Mm, don't know. Maybe circles is the right thing to do. Let's do it. What have I got to lose? It's paint and paper, people. It's paint and paper. Um, let's just dab it through this. Yeah, it's paint and paper. And a little bit of my time. And you never know, there may be people out there who absolutely love this. Um, do leave a comment telling me whether you think it's as, this is good, bad or indifferent. I'm actually quite liking that. And remember, this is being cut up. That's, that's part of the thing I have to keep reminding myself of. I don't mind that. It's going to take some drying, but I don't mind that. This one, as I've got orange on the go, I said I wasn't going to do this, but we are now. I so want to put green into this. It's for some reason it's green or terracotta is just calling me at the moment. But it's not in the brief, people. It's not in the brief. Right. Okay, I'm going to pause the video because what I need to do is I need to get this all dry before I stamp the black onto it. Because if I stamp the black onto wet paint, it will pull the wet paint up and then contaminate the next bit. So bear with me, it'll be two seconds for you. It'll probably be quite a few minutes for me because I need to get both of these dry. Um, they're on acrylic plates, so I can't use too much heat on it because I don't, don't want to melt or warp my boards. So I will see you in two seconds for you. Be a little bit longer for me. Right, so they're both dry. This is the white one. This is the black one. And in drying them, I discovered I did exactly what I said I didn't want to do. I have covered every inch of the paper and I was hoping to leave spaces of black. Now I'm, I managed to leave little patches of white, but then they're negligible, let's put it that way. But you know what? That's fine. That's a learning curve. I need to pay more attention to controlling putting paint everywhere. Now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to stamp. I'm going to use black acrylic paint and we're going to use these new designs, Twisted and Twirled by um, PM Artist Studio. And that reminds me, by the way, um, this colour combo is run by myself and Paola Keane and it's hosted on the Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artist Facebook group. So that will actually be in the description, a link to that. If you click the link, it's a fabulously supportive group of people and artists. Um, you'll have to answer, I think, three questions to get in. Seriously, but it's a no-brainer. It's there just to basically check that you're not someone who's going to spam everybody or you're actually a human being, which is another criteria we like to meet. So I'm going to use my gel plate as my ink pad. I'm going to spread the black paint out with the brayer. I've got my wet cloth to one side, which I'm going to spread out on the side over here. So once I finish working with a stamp, I'll, I'll sit it face down on the wet cloth so that the paint doesn't harden. Now, I'm not looking for perfect. In fact, I never look for perfect. Um, I think what I'm going to do is because those two are relatively similar and those two are relatively similar and this one isn't, I'm going to keep maybe 
maybe these two for the black background, these two for the white background, and then I'll just add this one into both of them. That seems a bit diplomatic, doesn't it? Um, yes, let's just, just get some stuff on the go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm then going to have to stop again, because obviously I'm going to have to dry them before I cut them. So, right, that's, I'm just dabbing that in, just making sure I've picked up paint. And I'm going to, I'm not going directly to the edge. Oh, it's a lovely, lovely image. I'm not going directly to the edge because I know that I'm going to trim off the edge before I actually cut things. Right, that's two of those. I think that's enough on there. I'll come in with some circles. Um, I have to remember that this is being cut up. So my eye is trying to balance the design, but I shouldn't be trying to balance it. Um, I think I do want one more of these because I quite like this one. I like all of them, but this one's special. Um, and then we've got this one, which is the one that's going to play in both fields. And I'll put it straight in the middle of that white block there. I'm trying to work out roughly where things would be. I think I'm going to put it by there. Right, so that's that. See, I feel like it needs to be up there, but it probably does actually. Not all of it, just a section of it, which is good because the bit that didn't print is on the side. Right, let's flip these out. And let's put more paint on my palette, as I'm calling it. Right, again, just inking it up. I think I'm going to go directly on top of this white one because see, it'll give me the drama behind it. And I might do that with each of those, actually. Um, the circle one. Quite fancy one down there. I think there is calling to me. I just need a little more black paint. This over here needs us something. I don't mind going off the edge of the design. I, I'm okay with that. I think this just needs one more by there. I'm wondering whether I want a half one by there. Right. So I'm going to stop you for two seconds now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry these off. And then I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to peel the tape off. So here we are, all nice and dry. Well, hopefully it's dry all the way through to the base. That's the black one, that's the white one. Yeah, okay. Um, this has also been another sort of experiment for me. And the reason I say that is because I normally use just regular masking tape if I'm taping stuff down. And 90% of the time when I pull it up, it tears the edge of my paper. So I went online and I found something called low tack masking tape. So I'm hoping it doesn't tear my paper. So this is the moment. So to peel this off and I'm pulling it away. See, I'm wondering whether using the hairdryer on it, drying this stuff helped. I've heard it does soften the glue, but I think this is working okay. Well, we'll see because if I, because I'm trying to do watercolors as well, just for my own personal thing. Um, and I find that my watercolor paper keeps being torn. So I'm hoping that this low tack stuff works. Right, let's take it away from its messy background. Right, already that looks a little better to me because I was a bit panicked that I've absolutely destroyed the idea, but I'm okay. Burgundy and orange, burgundy orange. It's definitely on there. Let's have a look at this other one, which is the top piece of tape. I think that is. All right. I was going to try and get get it so that I didn't put paint over the masking tape, but as you saw, I just went gung ho and and it ended up on there, sir. 
I'm hoping that doesn't cause me too many issues. I might have to come in from the other side with that one. Yes, I think there's a there's a definite improvement when you take them away from the messy tape. There you go. Actually, they're improving. Um, they're definitely improving. Right, what I want to do now is because I'm going to cut these into panels, um, I want to make sure that I eliminate this black edge here. And I want to do that purely because I don't want to cut a piece and then find there's a black strip down the side. So I'm just literally trimming that edge away. It will still give me enough dimension to be able to cut them into panels because I've already measured how much how the size of the panels so I know how much room I've got to play with and I think the, the longest bit is going to have to be five and five I'm trying to think I think the longest bit's going to have to be ten and a half I think that's that's the widest, oh, I didn't cut enough off there. And as this is a 12 inch, then we, we've got more than enough playroom with that. So I must admit, it did take me some math to work out how big things needed to be, because I'm, I'm trying to cut them so that I've got an equal border all the way around the edge when I actually put them onto the brown backing card or the craft colored backing card. So, and I, kept the backing card to the dimensions of what I normally cut a postcard to and that measurement is basically determined by basically a standard size but also it's the size that fits into my um, postcard storage box. Right let's just move that for one second. Right so They're interesting. Let's let's reserve judgment. Right. Let me just I don't expect you to read this because it's my chicken scroll handwriting, but I'll try and explain. So the back 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 panels, the craft card, I'm going to stick them to. Right. This is what I normally size of my postcards. So this is four and one eighth or 115 millimeters by five and three quarter inches or 146 millimeters. Okay, so one more time. The shortest distance is four and one eighth inches by uh, which is 115 millimeters, and this is five and three quarter inches, which is 146 millimeters. Now, to get this to the panels when they're cut to sit inside here with an equal um, size around them, the panels inner dimensions, the panel is going to be three and five eighths inches by five and a quarter inches, which is 92 millimeters by 134 millimeters. One more time, the panel that's gonna sit on here is three and five eighths inches by five and a quarter inches, and this is gonna be 92 millimeters by 134 millimeters. That, if I've done my job right, will give me a quarter inch or a six millimeter border around the piece when it's attached to that. Fingers crossed, math is not my biggest strength, I can absolutely assure you. So I'm going to flip these over, I'm going to move them up, I'm going to spin them round, I'm going to just, so I can't remember which, which is which. So I'm going to face that side down over there, and we're going to get cutting. Exciting, exciting. I hope this works. It's it's been a bit of an experiment. Not found it easy because I I don't well I'm these colour combos to me are all about taking myself out of my comfort zone, very much out of its comfort zone. Right, so I need it to be where am I up to? Oh, it's this one, right? Let's do five and a quarter strips first, because five and a quarter is the longest piece. So five and a quarter. Let's just turn it around this way. I don't know why I felt I needed to do that, but I just felt a way to do that. Five and a quarter. Right, 
This strip is now free. I'm going to, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to keep this. I'll put it with my gel print trim off pieces because that, that would make a nice belly band for something. And I'm okay with that. Right, let's do the same with this one, which is five and a quarter by five and a quarter. I don't know why I feel I need to turn them round. Um, I don't know. I just am. Right, that will give me this piece. Again, I'm liking that strip. You'll see those appear. They could even go in my art journal. Hmm, there's a thought. Okay, so we've now got them the right width. I now need to work out the height, um, which is three and five eighths. So where the heck is three and five eighths? One, two, three, four, five. So it's it's two notches past three and a half. Is that right? Yes, okay. Right, let's just hope I've measured this right. So two notches past three and a half, Move that to one side, two notches past three and a half. So I'm repeating it not for you, but for me, because if I don't repeat it, I'll forget it. Two notches past three and a half. That gives me a little decorative piece. I'm not going to throw any of that away. Two notches past three and a half. Two notches past three and a half. Two notches past three and a half. Another nice strip. I'm intrigued to see what these end up looking like, I must admit. This must be one of the more interesting videos you've watched, isn't it? Man Guillotine's Painted Papers. I can read it now, it's going to be in the press, people. <laughs> right. Another painted strip. I like the painted strips. Let's just hope that's a reflection of what the, the bigger pieces look like. Obviously, you can fast forward through anything you wish in this video. I have no qualms whatsoever. Stop, start, rewind, fast forward, jump ahead, or even stop watching if you find it's not something you want to watch. Okay, I'm loving the strips. Let's get rid of the guillotine. Now, reveal time, people, reveal time. So let's see what we've got. This is going to be interesting. Ooh, that's way busy. Mm, not bad. I'm not going to cast judgment till I'm fully ready for them. I don't. I don't mind. They they look like they need a feature on each of them. What that feature would be, I do not know. Two of them stuck together. I don't mind. It's, these are these are contemporary and modern looking for me, which is not really where I would sit myself. Okay, those are the black ones. I think I'm already liking the whiter ones better already. Or oh, quite like the stripes across there. That was actually I like it that way as well. That was a good move. Yeah, that was just lacking or something. Look, I don't I, I keep putting that at the top because it reminds me of a sun. Okay. Okay, don't mind that. So basically, my next job is going to be mounting them onto craft card, which will frame them out. So as you can see, that's that's what it's going to look like. And that's what I chose craft because I wasn't sure what color would support both of them without going into another color completely. Okay, they're just do I class this as a success or not? I'm unsure. Okay, so I'm back. And you may notice something very wrong with these. And that's because I was wrong. I was 
trying to glue them onto the craft card and I had one of those light bulb moments that what it was doing is I was trying to play it safe by putting them onto craft card background because I thought let's put them onto a neutral background and that I think is what was stopping me enjoying the cards so what did I do? I reached for black card and now they look very very different I mean, I'm liking these a heck of a lot better. And just as an example, I will show you all of them, but let's just let's just pull this one out. So if I was to put them on a greetings card, if I put it onto a white greetings card, how dramatic does that look? If I put them onto a craft card, greetings card, different different look, different drama. And I even have some cream colored card stock which I wouldn't normally have put it on, but actually I don't mind the warmth of that. It pulls the color out. So don't be afraid to experiment. And I think the reason I like them more now is the black border brings out the black in the stamping and really adds some drama. I love the way the gold on these are. Right. These are curled slightly because they're still damp because I've obviously just done them, but I'm, I'm liking them so much better now. I still think probably one or two of them could do with a focal point, but then am I trying to think the way I do as a journaler where most of my ephemera has a focal point or most of the stuff in my art journal has a focal point? Or should I just let that go and embrace the fact that they're abstract and is abstract meant to make sense? Probably only to the artist. Oh, it's too stuck together there. Come on. There you go. So I think, I think I achieved what I meant to achieve. I've definitely achieved the color combo. Orange and burgundy definitely preferential, uh, got preferential treatment in these. Um, they could be postcards, they could be card fronts. Do I like them? I kind of like some of them. I think I like the ones on the white background better than the ones on the black background. And I think it's because the burgundy is quite a deep colour and I tended to lose some of it, which is why my instinct was to put white onto the black ones to make the, the colour and the drama pop. But I think we did it. Um, I'd like to do this experiment again and... As I'm about to do it, I'm going to put a big sticky note here saying Kerry leave space because that's what's missing on here. There's no there's no space for the eye to rest. There's there's no areas in which I could stop a journey and start a journey in my viewing of the art piece. So I think we did OK. Um, so I'm going to call that done. I'm going to say. I'm going to leave them as they are, I think, because I don't know that I want to mount them all onto card backgrounds because I do think some would make nice postcards like that would make a lovely postcard to send out. Um, so, yes, so I'm, I'm OK with that. I'm quite happy with where it ended up. Um, there are definitely things I would do differently. Um, there's a learning curve in this for me. I tried my darndest to be more free in my application. I think I got there partially. I really do think I was a lot more free. I didn't just do horizontals and verticals. I did curves. I did diagonals. I tried to free up a little more. I think in hindsight, I probably would like to have used maybe some acrylic inks in these instead of just acrylic paint because I could then have spritzed it with water and it would have given me more of a watercolor effect. If these were watercolor card, um, or paper, I probably would have done a softer background in watercolours before adding the acrylics on. But learning curve all the way through. So thank you guys for joining me. I will be really interested to find out what you think of these. Um, I know you're going to comment on them anyway because you're really supportive of me and you do comment. But it's going to be interesting to see how many people go, love them, hate them, maybe in the middle. Um, not everyone's taste. I'm really drawn to this one for some reason. I really do love that one. Um, not everybody's taste. Not sure they're 100% my taste. But as I said, you've got to play. And when you play, you learn. And I learned stuff about me. That's another one I quite like too. Those two are really nice. Um, there's things about playing and experimentation that help you relax and push the boundaries. If you've got no expectations, 
of producing something amazing, then you're quite free to go, you know what, it's just paint, let's slap it on. And I think that's kind of what I did. So thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for supporting. Um, until next month, I want to see what that colour combination is and how I treat that. I think we've done postcards in the last two. I think I'm going to avoid postcards in the next one. Not sure what I'm going to do, but we'll see. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, bye-bye now.